Ten years ago, prolific art collector Kiran Nadar founded India's first private museum displaying modern and contemporary art. In its short history, the museum's influence has already proved extraordinary, and she is one of the most game-changing forces in Indian art, and continues to demonstrate the power of South Asian artists globally. A major, generation-sweeping exhibition of works from Nader's collection, titled Stretch Terrains, is currently on view at the museum. Hello and welcome to Mojarto Conversations. I'm Anu Subramanian. This week, we have the pleasure to sit down with Kira Nader. She's a trustee of the Shiv Nader Foundation, and she's the chairperson of the Kira Nader Museum of Art. Ms. Nader, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Thank you, Anu. Of course. Now, we are here at Stretch Terrains, which is an exhibition at Kiranadar Museum of Art. And it's really interesting because you have paintings, but you also have architecture and you have conceptual art and sculpture and videos. What is the crux of this exhibition? Well, this exhibition actually is a string of exhibitions. There's seven exhibitions in total, uh, which we've taken three of the important masters. Uh, Hussein, Raza, and Souza, and we've taken the period of architecture which links them, which is in the foyer of the museum, and then we've taken contemporary links to these artists. So it's all sort of linked together, but it's got both the modern and the contemporaries, although the emphasis is on the three moderns. You know, so we have these Mojarto conversations as a way to get to know luminaries in the art world better. And of course, you are one of the most famous collectors here in India. Uh, how did you get started with collecting? I started buying art for the home, really. I had no intention of uh, building a collection of, or starting a museum or any of these. These were not thoughts that I had. But uh, as I started getting more interested in art, the collection grew. And soon I had no wall space and I had put things in my husband's office and various places. And I was still collecting. And then I felt that there was a paucity of places for people to view art. And I was very motivated with uh, the New York art scene. New York has uh, the, the individual collector who puts their collections out into the museum space. And I felt India needs it. It's not possible just for the government to do these things. I think individuals have a role to play. So did you come in with an ethos for what you wanted Kiran Nadar Museum of Art to be? I mean, you know, when we're at an exhibition like this, you might think that this is a space to really celebrate the moderns. But so recently you were hosting a show where Dayanita Singh, a great contemporary artist, was hosting a real living exhibition where she was the curator in residence as well. So you do have this nice nexus of contemporary and modern. We do. We, we uh, are quite encyclopedic in that sense. We've had retrospectives of um, Nasreen Mohammadi, Himmat Shah, Jairam Patel, who were all sort of part of a group uh, in a sense. So we've done uh, various different shows. Of course, we've done um, shows with Dayanita and uh, shows where we've had um, the memorial of uh, Vivan Sundaram. And it, it's been quite, uh, uh, quite large sphere of activity. So is that sort of your core directive to be encyclopedic or did you have an objective going into making this? No, I didn't have an objective specifically. Um, of course, my uh, core collection uh, is very strongly in the modern because that's where I started collecting and that's what really interested me. But as uh, the collection has grown, I have started getting uh, a lot of the contemporary art artists as well. Also, we've uh, looked at artists who didn't really get their due. Somebody like Himmat Shah. Um, I think we're the first people to have a really major retrospective of his work. And of course, Nasreen Mahmoudi uh, was the first show uh, of hers, in ma a major show. And then that show traveled to the Reina Sofia uh, in Madrid and the Met in New York. So that was a major event. 
that uh, uh, for us. Absolutely. The works that you are bringing in and displaying here are in fact affecting the way that the entire West and the entire world sees Indian art and the Indian artists who came out of that modern period. Did you think that that was going to happen as you were building this collection? Certainly I wanted to expose both our people and the West to Indian art. I think Indian art is very undervalued. If you look at the way Chinese art has, has uh, moved, uh, on the basis of Chinese collectors, Chinese collectors collect a lot of Chinese contemporary and modern art. Um, and unfortunately, Indian collectors haven't really found that calling. And, um, you know, if you look at a, a real estate um, in the West, in New York, let's say, you see a million dollar apartment, there'll be art worth two to three million dollars in the apartment. So I have an interesting experience along those lines. Uh, I think it was three or four years ago, I visited Sotheby's during Asia Week, and I fell in love with this Taya Mehta blue portrait, and I just loved it. And I ended up going to see the auction that night. I really enjoyed it. Uh, fast forward about a year and a half, and I came here, and I visited you at your office, and I saw that on the wall. Yes. And I remember thinking to myself, I am so envious of the person who got to take that home, but I never thought I would see it again. So it was really exciting to see that, you know, such a great work of Indian art that had left India, you were able to bring that back. And I think that a lot of people don't realize how difficult that is to do because works like Thayab Mehta's go for so much money abroad. Yeah, and, and it's something that needs to be actually uh, encouraged to bring back works which have left India, um, not only in the modern and, and contemporary, but look at our heritage of the miniatures and the antiquities. Um, they were taken out illegally in most, most of the cases. And now to bring them back, actually, the government should give incentives to people who want to bring their miniatures back to India. They should be incentivized rather than being charged a prohibitive duty. Because these works certainly belong to India. Yeah. And they're selling at so much more expensive outside of our borders. Yes. But there's no incentive to bring them back. because There isn't. And people who buy them uh, would rather keep them abroad. Uh, or rather than bring them back. So that incentivizing should be in place. To talk a little bit more about this exhibition, I think that it offers this wonderful reminder that we don't speak enough about, which is that these modern artists and this modern art culture that we know so well was being developed at the same time that India was in flux. India's modern identity came at the exact same time as India's artistic modern identity. Uh, how did you guys sort of weave these together? Um, I think there was definite um, linking between the two. When you look at the architectural development as well, I mean, what was happening with the architecture in India, that was also growing um, in a sense with the moderns. I think there was a linkage there as well. And uh, the progressive art group, which was formed, I think uh, had its root in the modernity of India. And so it was, a, it, it was a great evolution that timed itself with the independent movement and what was happening uh, around the country. You look at the architecture and that is literally the construction of our modern identity. Buildings in a lot of ways are how we know cities. Um, and what's so striking to me is now, here at the exhibition, there's this incredible section on the Hall of Nations being built. And now they're planning to demolish the Hall of Nations at Pragati Medan. I know it will be very sad if it's demolished. Actually, there was uh, quite a lot of public um, criticism of that. And I think there have been people on various um, social forums who have been saying that it should not be demolished. So let's see what the government decides to do. Actually, Pragati Medan has some great um, institutional areas which need to be built up. And they, they should do something right in the center of the city. They have this 
really beautiful space and they could do some great things with it but it needn't be at the cost of demolishing some of the structures which need to be maintained i mean the aesthetic is an homage to that moment yeah that's true do you think that this criticism is going to lead to people changing their minds or is the demolition going to happen well i don't know i don't know what they're really going to do with Pragati Medan, they want to make it into a convention area, but it's a very, very large area. And in fact, I was just telling them they should give us space for a museum there. Because even if you make a convention space, uh, you need people who come, who can visit uh, uh, art uh, spaces. So it would be nice if they did that. Of course, government is not pro doing anything like that. Why not? But we've tried to move the government for land uh, unsuccessfully. Um, of course, uh, Delhi doesn't, even though there's lots of land there between Delhi government and central government, it's all kind of confusing. And uh, we are very keen to build a standalone museum, but we haven't been able to find the required land that a project like that entails. Now, my understanding is you wanted to build this third space alongside all those other major museums near India Gate, right? Oh, I would love to, but I've given up on that. We're never going to get that space. But if you're, you know, providing the building, if you're offering a free public view of these incredible artworks, really, what does the government have to lose? I think I don't even know how aware they are that we exist, quite honestly. The interest of the government in the museum is is very small. So unless they get excited with this, it's not likely to happen. Um, and uh, I kind of don't think we're going to get land from the government, but we've decided that within this year, whatever whatever happens, we must finalize a space. That's a very big goal. Well, I've been saying this for the last three years and it hasn't happened. Oh. 2017 is the year. Yes. 2017 yes. is the year. On that note, we will take a quick break. Mojarto Conversations is in conversation with Karen Nadar. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.